So, hey, Mike, how are you? How's your quarantine going? Hey, I'm excellent. How about you? It's going well. Yeah, it's going well. It's 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 weird. It's it, like you don't you don't you don't know if it's like Monday or Saturday or Sunday. It's like every day is like a good day to do whatever you need to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a weird feeling. Yeah, it's easy to lose track of time. Yeah. All right. So today on the episode, we're gonna be talking about LDA. So Mike. You want to give it a go? Yes, uh, and I just want to begin by saying there will be a quiz at the end about what LDA stands for, and it's latent Dirichlet allocation. <laughs> uh, so anyways, everybody calls it LDA because it's not very fun to say. Uh, <laughs> LDA is a clustering technique in machine learning. It's become very popular uh, in recent years. I think the paper has like 30,000 citations or something. Um, the reason it's so popular is because it's relatively easy to implement and the results are always very interesting and pretty trustworthy too. So basically you can take a bunch of review text. Let's say you get you gather all the reviews for restaurants within a city uh, and you take the, those reviews, feed it into the LDA model and it's going to analyze each sentence. It's gonna find how close each word is to other words. And so it's gonna find like relationships between words, do that for a all the reviews, and it's going to shoot out like a two-dimensional plot uh, with all these bubbles on it with different sizes and different words in it. We call those territories. So what this LDA model has done as it is, is it summarized all that review text in these territories, and it does a pretty good job of finding the topics. Where could we use that? So let me think about it. You need a lot of text. So where do we have a lot of text in social media? Definitely maybe sometimes too much text but anyway so there you get a lot of text reviews right people love writing reviews about places they go restaurants they visit hotels they they visit attractions they see you know they they like to write reviews on Yelp TripAdvisor on Google so, and there there's a lot of text now could we for example take all that text put it together run an LDA model and then get territories about a specific brand? Could we do something like that? So DMOs have had a very rough problem with defining their brand because they're made up of all the partner businesses and they're sort of like a representation of the city. In that sense, they can, they can define what their brand is, but it can be difficult to do that in a data-driven way. They need a survey to be able to do it. And research surveys cost money. They need to be updated. And also the sample size isn't huge. We already know that DMOs have a problem with tracking customers and knowing who's coming to visit. So imagine like hiring a research company to try to survey the people who come to visit. It might be difficult to get a big sample size. So uh, now we have an excellent opportunity to look at the reviews of the people who came and visited and do a brand audit that way. What you're saying is we don't need nobody to go through reading all the reviews and trying to make sense of thousands and hundreds of thousands of reviews, but you give it to the LDA model and it will give you territories that you can work with, right? Like for example, oh, here's a territory about the love that people have or the passion that people have for your brand. Well, here's another territory with a big problem that your brand has and people are complaining about specifically, specifically that, right? Right, right. You so could, if we, you could say that for the you could see that for the brand or for the category or for the city or for the country or for where. Yeah, there's lots of interesting results that come out of LDA models. So like if we did do it for all the restaurants in a city, what we could see is uh, let's say there's a franchise in that city for some restaurant. Let's call it Brinks. If Brinks is doing a very good job at creating like good experience and they have like some unique things about them and people are talking about them in reviews, if they do a good enough job of that they'll end up as their own territory inside of the LDA. But all the other restaurants who don't have any distinction, they're gonna end up in the same territories. There's gonna be generic territories for like bad experiences, good experiences, probably a topic about like the quality of food. So the businesses that don't have distinction, they're gonna end up just blending in with everybody else. All right, so LDA, for example, could be used to get what we used to get in the past from surveys, right? Like where you go and ask people their opinion about a specific thing, a specific brand, a specific experience or something. Now you don't need to do that anymore because people are sharing their experiences on social media and reviews and everywhere. And you can use the LDA model to 
identify the territories that are present in that large body of text, right? Right, right. So like, like the brand has a, this like image that it wants to portray to people, like the, the brand image. And so the brand is saying, this is what we are. You guys need to believe us about this. Uh, however, that's not always in line what people, with what people actually think. So you get people writing reviews and talking to other people and saying something else that doesn't align with what the brand actually is. So if you have a very powerful brand and you have good strategy, you can actually end up having a brand image that is reinforced by what people are saying. I think it's really import, important to understand that when you, when you analyze the conversation that people are having and that the brand is having, you can find territories that you want to own, that you want to be identified with, but you're not currently. The LDA can help you do the plan, the roadmap to get to that territory, right? To use the words, use the concepts that people relate with that territory where your brand is going to be powerful and is going to be distinctive. We have found cases where people tend to love something about the brand and the brand doesn't even know because the brand is not in that specific territory or is not focusing there. But people are seeing something of value that the brand is not necessarily actively um, communicating or actively exploiting. So that's everything that is interesting about the LDA. Mm -hmm. So the customer has already done half the work in creating a brand image. The, the brand can work on somehow incorporating that into their brand image if that's something they want to be defined as. And another interesting thing is not only can the LDA tell you where you want to move to, but it can also tell you where you don't want to move to. So it tells you about your competition. All right, Mike, thank you very much. Another good conversation. Thank you for explaining this LDA, let's see if people remember it. They can put it in the comments, I think. And, and, and I don't know, <laughs> people that remember, they're going to get a prize or something, like chocolate maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'll give one more reminder. Latent Dirichlet allocation.